Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to do something Scottish again. I'm going to make full fowl brideys. First of all, quick shout out to Sam Aitchison, who made a wonderful donation via PayPal. Thank you very much, Sam, I do appreciate that. Okay, this was requested by Adam Garrett, who's a fellow YouTube cooker. I know what I mean. <laughs> He's actually one of, one of the few YouTube cooking channels that I do watch now and again. So after I did a couple of Scottish things last week, Aberdeen Butteries and... Can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> and Cullen Skink. Adam came on and made a comment claiming that he was part Scottish. Oh yeah and requesting four far brideys. Now, I've heard of these, but I didn't actually know what they were till now. So I'm glad that I found out because I'm gonna like them a lot, you know, because they're like a kind of a pie. Actually, they're, they're very much like a Cornish pasty, but without the Swedes and turnips and horrible stuff. So uh, I think they'd be good. There's a few stories about where the name comes from. Well, first of all, obviously Forfar is a place in Scotland. Actually, probably not obvious if you don't know anything about Scotland, but it's a place. And uh, the bridey bit is possibly because these were popular for people to eat at weddings. I'm not buying that one. If you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, etc. And let's get on with it. Four far brideys. Right, you're going to need some pastry. Um, traditionally, it would probably have been short crust pastry. These days, with puff pastry or flaky pastry being so easy to buy, that's what people use. But you know that I am not a massive fan of that, so I'm going to make my own short crust pastry. So I've got 300 grams of plain all purpose flour. I'm making four brideys, by the way half a teaspoon of salt and 150 grams of fat. This is a mixture of butter and lard. You can use all butter or all lard or shortening, whatever that is. <laughs> and some water, possibly 150 ml, we'll find out. Because you only need just enough to make it come together in a bowl. So I'll put the salt in with the flour, just stir that and then rub in the fat. You'll notice I've cut it into little bits. It's cold and cutting it into little bits makes it a lot easier to, to integrate it into the flour. And you can do it with a stand mixer, but you know, for a change, I'm not. So rub it in with your fingertips. You don't want to use your whole hand because that will be too warm and that will melt the fat. That's not what we want. It does take a while though, so uh, go and have a cup of tea and come back later. Okay, so you'll finish it with something like coarse breadcrumbs and just make sure there's no massive lumps of fat still there. Now we'll uh, make a well in the centre, as they always say in old recipe books, and I never do. And just gradually add your water and stir it in. Okay, this will do. I'll just tip that out and give it a bit of a a bit of a squudge. And cover it in plastic film. And that can go in the fridge to rest for half an hour. Right, I'm going to make up the meat filling. So I've got 500 grams of lean minced beef. That's about 5% fat. You can use finely chopped steak if you can be bothered. Traditionally, 40 grams of suet, or you could use butter. Suet comes in a box like that. You can probably get it online, but it'll probably cost you a fortune. So yeah. <laughs> half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of ground white pepper, half a teaspoon of mace, and a teaspoon of strong mustard, Sassanac mustard, and also 50 ml of beef stock. So I'm using one uh, stock cube with 50 ml of boiling water mixed together. This little measure comes up to 35 ml, so I'll fill that and a bit more. 
Right, let's chop this onion. <laughs> this never happens. I've actually leaking. Yeah, anyway, so it needs to be almost minced. Let's mix all the dry stuff in first. Half a teaspoon of salt because the stock will be quite salty. The pepper. And pour some boiling water over the crumbled stock cube. Actually, I think that'll do 35 mil because uh, we, we don't want a runny, saucy mixture. This is just to intensify the beefy flavour. Half a teaspoon of mace and a teaspoon of mustard. Let's add the suet and the onion. I'll stop crying, but let's get all that really well mixed. Make a well in the centre and pour in the stock. Right, we'll pop that in the fridge and um, get on with rolling out the pastry for the brideys. Right, I'm just going to make up some egg wash. So that is one egg. And a splash of milk. Mixy mixy. And that's nice and smoothy woothy. <laughs> now, your brideys are like the horseshoe shape. They're not a semicircle like Cornish pasties. So what you need is an oval shaped thing to use as a template or, you know, just do it by eye. So I've got, I've got this and I think it's, it's possibly a little bit small, but um, it's the right shape. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with that. Let's see how we get on. Flour on the worktop, as always. Grab a bit of pastry and roll it out to four or five millimetres thick which is about a quarter of an inch, I think. Okay, I think that'll do. So I'll just cut around. Actually, I'll, I'll leave um, a bit of a margin. I'll make it a bit bigger. All right, let's, let's get some of that meat mixture. So we want a bowl that will occupy the bottom half of your oval. I'll just weigh that. Okay, that's 94 grams. So. <laughs> I don't know how they evolved this shape. They could have, this was invented in the early 19th century, I think. You know, they, they could have made, just just fold it over square, like a, like a Greg steak bake. But they didn't. Right now, there's a, a little trick uh, that traditional butchers, bakers, <laughs> would have used, maybe, which is to, uh, because the onion in it is optional, so if they'd made it with no onion, there would just be one hole. If there is onion, there's two holes. According to Wikipedia, who know everything. So we want 94, 98, 94 I think it was. Plop that in the bottom half. And then I'm just going to moisten the edge with water. Or you could use egg wash, but I happen to have some water for a particular reason. And that reason is dip your fork in it when you're doing the crimping on the edge and it will stop it sticking to the pastry. And I've got a baking sheet with um, greaseproof paper lining. So I want to paint them with the egg wash and then we'll put them in the fridge to rest for about half an hour before we bake them. And for the baking, you want your oven, convection oven or air fryer oven at 180 degrees Celsius. And that's 200 for a conventional one and that is gas six. And because you've got a great big chunk of raw meat in these, they'll need probably 45 to 55 minutes and you might need to turn down the temperature towards the end if they're, uh, if they're browning too much. In we go. Okay, time is up. Oh yeah. <laughs> they certainly are cooked, I think. 
just check the uh, internal temperature should be at least 70 celsius oh my god 96 they're cooked so I'll put them on the wire rack let them cool down for a few minutes and then have a taste <laughs> these these two holes they, they look like eyes but nobody's allowed to say that the bride is of frankenstein okay taste test time <laughs> you will notice half of this one has disappeared <sighs> it were nice so yeah look the um i think the fillings t turn out really well it's uh you know good color and pretty dense but also it's not dry the bottom is not soggy and the taste is really yummy savory pastry is lovely it's all grand you can eat these hot or cold i expect they'll be gone by morning well done scotland again anyway four far brides thanks for watching and see you next time <laughs>